In this video we will be building a blog title generator in Ruby and if this is your first time to the channel make sure to subscribe for more Ruby and Ruby on Rails content. And before we get into the content I want to give a shout out to Scout APM for sponsoring this video. Scout APM makes it easy to track down bugs within your code such as n plus one queries, memory bloat and other performance related issues. If you want to try out a 14 day free trial check out the link in the description below. To begin this tutorial, let's open up Terminal and create a new directory. So let's change directory to our blog title generator. And then I will create a new file here using the touch command. So let's create a file called blog title generator. And we will end that in the .rb extension for Ruby. And now we can open up this folder in our code editor. So I've opened up this Ruby file that we have created and we're gonna create a class here called blog title generator. Next we will define a initializer method. So the initializer method will be read before any other method in this class. And we will define a second method that will do the processing of the data. So we will call this create titles. In terms of workflow, when we run this script, we want to prompt the user to input some data first. So in that case, it will be a topic or a keyword. So outside of the class, we will ask a question to the user first using the put string command. So what we want to gather here is really a noun or a verb. And then we will be passing that, that word, that keyword that the user inputs into this class. So let's begin by getting the question to the user and then gathering the input. So let's begin by asking the user for a topic And then we will create a new variable. So let's call this variable topic and we'll use a gets command here to collect the input from the user. And then we'll call the chomp method to remove the line break that is attached to the user's input. So once we have that keyword that is input by the user, we will pass that into this initialize method. So we will add this variable that gets passed into this method, and then we will set a instance variable with the same name. By assigning our keyword, our topic to this instance variable, it allows us to use that variable within a different method of this class. So in this case, we can use it within our create titles method. So what we want from this method is to get a string and return it back to the user with the topic or keyword embedded in that string. So the most basic version of that we can do is to create a static string right now as a variable and just output that using the put string command. So let's try that first. Since we already have a instance variable, we can use string interpolation to embed that variable within this string. And now let's output the string back to the console. So we'll say puts title. And before we can try this out, we need to create a new instance of this class. So we'll say blog title generator dot new and we'll pass in the topic that we have set in the variable above. We'll call this variable generator. And then finally we will call generator dot create titles. To test this out I'm gonna run Ruby followed by our file name 
and I'm going to enter the word football here to see what happens. And we can see that it has created our title correctly, but this makes this a little bit more interesting now by returning dynamic titles. So let's create a new method that will contain a list or an array of blog title ideas. This method won't be doing anything fancy. It will just be a place to store our blog title ideas. When this method gets called, it will return the entire array. So I'm just going to copy and paste the first title, and then we will duplicate this afterwards. So for now, I'm going to wrap the word that we're going to be using in each sentence. I'm going to wrap it in curly braces and call it topic. So we don't need to worry about that at the minute. We will be replacing that word later. So I'm creating five different titles here. So five different titles that will be pulled from randomly. So before we get to that part, let's just update these titles and make our keyword fit around each title. And you could add as many titles here as you like. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to add five to give you an idea of how that works. And I'm using a slash here to escape this quotation mark. If you're finding this video helpful, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more Ruby content. And I'm also releasing a course on Ruby on Rails and potentially another course on Ruby language itself. So you can subscribe to the mailing list and I will announce when those are launching. And you can find a link to the mailing list in the description below. So now that we have our titles templated out, so we have five titles now with our topic embedded in each one. So let's go back up to our create titles method. And this time we're going to remove this string and we're going to call the all titles method here. So we're going to call all titles I and mean, then we're going to say dot sample. Now the sample method is used on an array to pull back a random entry from that array and you can pass in a number to pull back more than one. So in this case we're going to pull back three different items from this array at random. By taking these three random samples from this array it is also building us a new array called titles. So this variable that we have created called titles is an array itself. So we're going to iterate over that array now and say titles.each and then we will use the keyword title to select that one item from the array and then we will output that to the console. So let's try this now to see what happens. And now we can see that we have got three titles back and they are in a random order. These are all pulled in in a random sequence. But you will notice here that we have not changed the keyword yet. So we're still using the embedded topic with the curly braces. So what we need to do next is replace that with the keyword that the user has passed in. And we can do that using the g sub command. The g sub command allows us to substitute a piece of a string. So we can actually swap out a full word and replace it with another word. So in this case, we're going to replace the topic with these curly braces. You can change this to any word that you want to replace here, but we want to be replacing it with the keyword that gets passed in. So we've assigned that to this instance variable. Let's just try this out now. 
So we'll call our script again, and this time we'll enter the keyword swimming. And we can see that we've got three results returned with the keyword in place. So that's working great. So you could take this further and change the number that is being returned here. So in this case, we can pass in the number as a value. So if they want to return one result or two results. So let's quickly just add this in place just to round off this video. So we'll pass in the quantity as the second value. So at the bottom of our file, we will just add a second question. Let's just copy this and change the string that goes out to the user. So we'll say, how many titles would you like? Let's change this value to quantity, QTY, and we'll pass in the second value to the class. And finally, then we want to just ensure that the quantity is a integer value. So we can do this using typecasting. So even though we are taking a number from the terminal, it is being entered as a string. So we will use the dot two underscore i to convert that to a integer. So let's try this out now in the terminal. We'll enter our topic and how many titles we would like. And we can see that it is working now as expected. So we've got four results back and four different titles. So that's about it for this video. Hopefully you guys have found this helpful. And if you want to learn more about Ruby or Ruby on Rails, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. And I also want to give a big shout out to my sponsor for this video, Scout APM. Scout makes it easy to debug your application to remove N plus one queries, performance issues, and much, much more. Check out their link in the description and get a 14 day free trial. Other than that, I just want to thank you guys for watching and I will see you all in the next video.